Hello, today's episode number 101 of the Professor Slots podcast presents five ways to making a living playing slots, followed by the recording of a live discussion on YouTube. Plus, in this episode, I'll be covering the current state of slot machine casino gambling in the great U.S. state of Rhode Island. Thank you for joining me for the Professor Slots podcast show. I'm John Friedel, and this is the podcast about slot machine casino gambling. It is where I provide knowledge, insights, and tools for helping you improve your slot machine gambling performance. In case you missed it, on my last episode, I went over my state-by-state online resource for slots enthusiasts from my weekly live stream Q&A session on YouTube. Further, I reviewed Puerto Rico slot machine casino gambling in 2020. I hope you enjoyed listening to my last episode as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top tier slot machine casino gambler. Audience member RS asked, are there people that make a living playing slot machines? What an excellent question. Yes, they do. But how? Let's get into it. As I relate information I've collected over time on this topic, keep in mind that I'm not an income tax specialist. If you pursue any of the ideas I put forward here, I recommend seeking professional advice from an income tax expert. This presentation has the following sections. Introduction. Do professional gamblers exist? Do professional slots players exist? Be able to win at slots. How to win at slots? Your slots gambling career and a summary. Do professional gamblers exist? The first question we should ask ourselves when considering making a living playing slots is whether anyone else does with some other form of gambling. The answer to that question is a resounding yes, and the IRS agrees. Professional gamblers do exist, but we should be clear about the term professional gambler, given its sometimes casual use. For clarity, what does the IRS consider a professional gambler? Here's a professional interpretation. Quote, The professional gambler reports gambling winnings and losses for federal purposes on Schedule C, profit or loss, from business. To compute his or her business income, the professional gambler may net all wagering activity but cannot report an overall wagering loss. End quote. This is from Tax Issues for Professional Gamblers by Alistair Nevis, Journal of Accountancy, October 1st, 2016. Using less income tax jargon and plucking out the important bits, a professional gambler reports gambling winnings and losses as business profit or loss and cannot report an overall wagering loss. Some of the lack of clarity of the general use of the term professional gambler comes into play at times. The lesser term semi-professional gambler reports the same as a professional gambler, but instead only makes enough to supplement their income. Semi-pro gamblers don't earn a living through gambling, not a full-time living, anyway. The IRS doesn't distinguish between semi-pro and pro gamblers, as either way, they have an overall profit. When it comes to slots gambling, should we make the same distinction between pro and semi-pro? As we'll see, this is a trick question. Do professional slots players exist? I have met slots players who claim to be professional gamblers, but it's been less than clear when speaking with them that they only play slots. Whatever your table game of choice is, being a member of the casino's loyalty program means you receive free slots play. You can be a professional gambler because you make a profit at poker, but you'll play machines to use the free slots play. Otherwise, it's an awful waste. These professional gamblers have pro status with the IRS because of their gambling at table games, not for playing slots. What we would like to know is, do professional slots players exist? As explained to me by long-term slots players, having once obtained professional gambling status playing slots, the IRS will not revoke a prior decision. This process is a so-called grandfather clause. But what if you've never attempted to be a professional gambler before? Will the IRS accept you as a professional gambler who only plays slot machines? The answer is no. They won't. At least, not automatically. Why not? Frankly, the IRS has the outdated idea that slot machines are entirely luck-based. They think playing slots is equivalent to flipping a coin. If you attempt to get professional status playing slot machines only, the best advice suggests a high likelihood of an IRS audit. 
Further, if challenged, they'll take the issue to court, where you'll need to explain slot machines aren't entirely luck-based convincingly. How might you do this? For example, you could record an audiobook like Learning to Win. The term I'd use here is problematic. It's problematic to convince the IRS that slot machine casino gambling isn't entirely luck-based. I'm confident I could prove it sufficiently in court, but why bother making an effort? I have never officially been a professional gambler whose game of choice is playing slot machines. I hadn't tried to convince the IRS of this because, well, what was there to gain? Answer. Nothing that I could see. Can you? Be able to win at slots. Having a professional gambler status isn't necessary to make a living playing slots. People often want professional gambler status for, well, the elevated condition they think still comes with it. It's kind of a thing of the past, but I suppose the heart wants what the heart wants. Who am I to stand in the way? Nevertheless, a bit later, I'll explain a popular workaround. Pro gambler status or not, making a living playing slots absolutely means making a profit at slots. Audience member SD does. He told me his buddies pointed out how good he is and that he should make a living. The real first step at making a living playing slots is to be able to win at slots. With standard casino business practices having broken slot machines from being fully luck-based, winning at slots has become a skill, and we learn skills. Let's say that you're like SD and win at slots. How? Because you've got skills. You've found the patterns to succeed at your casino, where perhaps the simplest ways to take advantage of standard casino business practices are described by my winning slot strategies. Good job. Well done. I'm proud of you. But how many patterns of winning are covered in your skill set? To keep winning, you depend on the casino to keep doing whatever they're doing. If your casino comes under new ownership and they make business changes, then your winning at slots is disrupted, perhaps indefinitely. To make a living playing slots, you need to win at slots. That's the first necessary skill. But the other essential skill is being able, again and again, to learn how to win at slots. How to win at slots. Professional poker players can make a profit gambling. Some play poker regularly and earn their living incrementally throughout the year. Other poker players take a while to save a monetary stake and compete in a huge poker tournament somewhere once a year. Skilled slots players earn their living incrementally throughout the year. But do some slots players win big? Occasionally they do, but 99% of the time it's just luck. Life-changing jackpots worth millions of dollars still exist, although they're fading away due to nightmare-like legal liability issues for the casinos. There are the so-called wide-area progressive slot machines. People who have won these mega jackpots were lucky, which is no way to make a living. Sometimes skilled slots players are lucky, which is terrific and adds to their income. The rest of the time, they grind it out. They are advantage players, APs, as explained in Understanding Advantage Play Slots in Modern Casino Environments. Skill-based slots players search, study, observe, and experiment until they find those few slot machines at a casino which are winners when played in a specific way. These skilled players then proceed to wear out the chair at that slot machine as they week after week and month after month incrementally make money. Once you figure out how to win in general, you don't stop doing whatever you've figured out unless forced. As mentioned, maybe the casino changes ownership, or much more rarely, perhaps something drastic happens to the economy, such as a global pandemic. As we all know, these things happen. Consequently, making it a living playing slots isn't a job. It's a career. And careers don't just happen. They're created and managed. Your slots gambling career. I may never pursue professional slots player gambler status with the IRS. It's difficult and the legal fees will be expensive, and I'd only be doing it to make a point. But I, and more than a few others, make up to a full-time living playing slots, and none of us, or you for that matter, have the problematic IRS issue of proving we win at slots. What's this miracle solution, you ask? Well, why not make playing slots your business? After all, why wouldn't you? It's another potential revenue stream. As I've already pointed out, make sure you check with an income tax professional. But everything you might be looking for from having professional gambler status can occur another similar way. Start a business where your business is about slots. Are you shy? Then start a podcast. You'll likely never have to meet anyone in person. And it's not hard or particularly expensive. 
See my other article, Why You Need to Start a Recreational Gambling Podcast. A gambling podcast works just as well when it's not recreational anymore. Are you photogenic? Great. YouTube it is. Some YouTubers only ever use the camera on their phone. As you get popular, you can monetize through YouTube. Or sooner, if you've got a product to sell somewhere. Clever shirt, anyone? Or maybe you've written a book on slots. That works too. Maybe I'll see you later on the book tour or on the speaking engagement circuit. Other successful slots businesses include recording your play at casinos, although it's not as easy as it seems. You can't just record at a casino unless they let you, so you'll need a contract. Your casino will either agree or they won't, so just ask them. Summary. Making a living playing slots can be a part-time supplement to your other household income or be a full-time career. Whatever level of profit is your financial goal, you'll need to know how to win at slots. Further, you'll need to succeed using skills you've developed and not fully depend on luck-based winning. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Here's the audio recording of my latest live stream Q&A session. Hello, Slots enthusiasts. How are you? It's great to hang out with you again for another Professor Slots podcast episode and live stream. Today, we'll be diving into a question I'd gotten during a consultation with a client. The question was, are there people that make a living playing slot machines? That's coming up. <clears throat> Hi, my name is John Friedel. Welcome to Professor Slots, a channel that's all about mastering casino slots so you can win your way to success. If you've ever walked into a casino, looked around, and wondered what's going on with slots and more, I can help. Thanks again for joining us today. Whether you're listening on the podcast, watching this video later, or here with us on the live stream at noon Eastern time each Saturday, I'm glad you're all here. But first, if you're uh, with us during the live stream, make sure to say hello to everyone in the live chat. Some people um, are regulars, some are new. Uh, and so uh, let us know where you're at or, or where you play slots. I'll check in with the live chat in a little bit. And as always, be sure to ask your slots related questions. <clears throat> Uh, today's topic is based on a conversation I had with a member of my audience, whom I'll just call RS, um, where RS asked, are there people that make a living playing slot machines? Uh, we had a bit of a conversation. I've invited, invited him here today. He's here uh, on, the live, on the live chat, um, and uh, which nobody else can see unless you're actually here um, during the live stream. So I thought, what an excellent question. I thought other slots enthusiasts might also be interested in this, this topic. So I wrote an article on it, which I published yesterday evening called Five Ways to Make a Living Playing Slots. I'm still working on producing the video, but it should be finished and uploaded in a few days, perhaps as early as maybe today, but probably tomorrow, um, Monday at the latest. Uh, See lots of familiar names in the uh, live chat that's uh, scrolling past my eyes. I um, uh, wanted to thank Paula uh, for being today's moderator in the live chat uh, so she can keep an eye on things. We've had some um, interesting non-humans show up, <laughs> robots or something, I don't know. <laughs> um, and so she's uh, keeping uh, an eye on uh, the situation for us. Um, uh, and uh, so getting back to the topic, uh, uh, since I published the article only last night, you might not have seen it yet. Now, this only applies uh, to people on the live stream, basically. Uh, it won't be very long uh, before the video is available a day or two, um, which means you could probably find it if you're watching this recording later. Um, in fact, if you let, excuse me, if you let the video end, YouTube has allows me a way to uh, let the next video that plays be something of my choice. And so I'll, I'll make the next video that plays 
that video. Uh, if you're on, uh, if you're a listener of the podcast, uh, well, as you know, the first part of the podcast episode that you're listening to, which should be number 101, um, was actually, I went over that article. So uh, probably the people that are worst off is the people in the live chat because uh, it only came out last night. Um, and uh, 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 Paula, uh, yes, Paula was kind enough to post uh, the link in the live chat. Um, and, uh, but, but again, since I only published it last night, you might not have seen it, might not have seen it, depending on how you're listening to this or watching this. As always, if you want to know what's in the post, uh, you'll have to go take a look at it. Uh, I'll put the link in the description of this video, as well as in the show notes, uh, for those, uh, um, those podcast listeners. Um, but also, uh, Paul put it in the live chat. So um, again, as always, it is not my intent to spoil it for you here. Um, I, I I don't intend to 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 just read you the article. Um, uh, that's what the article is for. That is what the video is for. That is what the podcast episode um, before this portion of episode one hundred and one is about. But I did want to talk about it. I did want to talk about during today's uh, talk about it during today's show. Um, uh, I see lots of things in the chat. <laughs> it's, it's always great when it's uh, uh, so busy um, uh, uh, live, uh, but it does. Uh, that's why I have a helper now. Um, uh, we got more than the usual number. Uh, for those of you who are looking for Chip Baron, as he calls himself here here on um, uh, YouTube, uh, he gambles uh, Saturday mornings, and so he. Uh, Apparently, he's not able to make the chat. Um, maybe that will change um, uh, in the future because he was able to make it for a while. Uh, when we moved from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to noon a month or so ago, uh, apparently not working out as well for him. And he always had a lot to say. Um, in any case, uh, for this article, um, it's I don't. I don't want to, I don't try to duplicate my published content here. Uh, but sometimes there's questions or perhaps more accurately unexplored avenues of discussion in other words in other words what didn't i talk about so let's talk about what i didn't talk about um in the article i, I briefly touch on poker players that make a living uh that well um this is actually i have something to say for a little while here um but i think this might be a good time to check the live chat uh, just to see what's spilling over um uh, i'll quickly run through some of the content here um lots of hellos um i'm, I'm usually here about 10 to 15 minutes before the show starts um before we start recording uh and uh, chatting with people so some of that took place in a lot of uh Family, friends, and friends um, are here. Steve, uh, uh, RS is here. Uh, Lois and Dave, family, friends. Larry from UK. Chuck, uh, St. Louis. Paula, our moderator, um, uh, is here. Let's see. Joe is here. He he moved to Arizona. Um, he'd been planning on do that, doing that. That was tough. Uh, Jeffrey from Maine is here. Uh, uh, Greener Pastures, um, Wisconsin, right? Uh, Wise Virgin, uh, which is Richard from Western uh, uh, North Carolina. Uh, and he plays at uh, Harris Cherokee. Uh, a lot of the regulars, uh, some new people. Uh, Dave Odom uh, is, hopefully I pronounced that correct, is here. Um, he's in uh, Salem, Oregon. Uh, so we're getting, a, well, more than just the United States. We've got Canada, uh, UK, and across the U.S., um, uh, so, uh, RS is saying, uh, if I, if you, if I want his information about how about going playing slots and try to make it li living before the pandemic, I don't mind sharing that information with you. Um, thank you, RS. Uh, we have been talking on the live stream along, uh, a lot about how to, about how to win at different places. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the best place for you to share that would be in our Facebook community. So I have one for every state. Um, and, uh, you know, go to your state. That's where I, you know, found you. So that, that's the best place because there you can see photos. The live stream that we 
have, um, there's a live chat. And I like to keep that private. So the only time anybody can ever see the live chat is if they're here for the live stream, uh, as you are. And um, so, you know, the 15 concurrent viewers that are right now here for the live stream would see that, but not the 700 who would be watching it later. So uh, this isn't the best place for that. There's, and there's no really no way to show pictures and, and whatnot, or even have much of a conversation because you're limited to high white characters. Anyway, technical difficulties aside, I think the community might be the best, best place to share that. If you'd care to share it with everybody or just send me a message. I'm interested, but uh, this might not be the best place for it. And I'm not you know, distracted as I sometimes get because RS is here with us. Uh, um, and the audio is good. Great. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, so I'll leave um, RS to put something in the chat. Um, just be aware that uh, I'm not likely to see it uh, because we're doing things live here. Um, but, uh, you know, feel free. Um, there's a <laughs> method to my madness, honest. Um, so uh, let's talk about what we didn't talk about in the article. Uh, uh, yeah, so um, in the article, I briefly touch on poker players that make a living that way uh, as an example of what slots players might do. But then I never go further. I, I, I think it would be an interesting idea if we did. Um, do you know any professional poker players? I've met a few, uh, both the kind that use poker winnings to pay for their playing other table games. I'm looking at you, Mark Duvall, from the You Can Bet on That Recreational Gambling podcast, uh, based on what he told me uh, uh, when we were in uh, Connecticut that one time at Foxwoods. Um, so... If you are interested in, you can bet on that. This is a show that's very friendly, family friendly, recreational podcasting, not trying to sell any time, anything, anytime. Uh, uh, but they have a great uh, two hosts, Mark and Dr. Mike. Uh, and th I've mentioned them before. I'll mention them again. Uh, you can bet on that dot com. And I'll put the link in the uh, podcast show notes and the video description. If you're interested in non slots, these are the go to guys, uh, honestly. And it's so they get a lot of call-ins. Um, I called in uh, several times. Uh, in fact, on the last episode, they mentioned it, and they had a question about free slots play, and uh, I had an answer. So I sent them something, and we're likely to see that in the next episode or two, uh, where you hear my voice there. Um, I'm not a regular, but uh, it's been half a dozen times in the last year and a half or so, something like that. Any case, um, they just have a question, a slots question, and I just figure I'll answer it for them, uh, for the people who call in there. Um, so let's stay focused on our article. Um, there's another kind of professional poker player that's the interesting example I want to talk about here. Um, not the ones that like Mark who who are, you know, use poker to play, uh, you know, use those winnings to play other table games for markets, craps, a very social game. Everybody wins and everybody loses together. That's why. Um, so, uh, so, but there's another kind of professional poker player that's interesting. And uh, let's talk about that. Uh, so the other kind of professional gamblers uh, making a living at playing poker, uh, that, that, that this other group of professional gamblers making a living at playing slots, um, they're the ones that go to, you know, go on the poker circuit, right? They go to different casinos across the country, uh, maybe for only a few months out of the year. Yeah, them. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you must either have heard of them or know them. Uh, but there's a lot of misinformation out there. Uh, when I uh, research this. I mean, it's it's not really misinformation. It's more like people don't check, um, and they're like, "Yeah, sure, I know people who do that." And they told me all kinds of high tall tales, <laughs> and and they must all be true. Where um, you know, there's enough of those. I think there's fewer people who make a living playing slots, fewer than poker professional poker players, which basically is, you know, there's a lot of those. If we all know one or five, you know, there's a lot of those. And um, uh, so so with more people and 
uh, you know, the World Series of Poker where they're all on television. Um, you know, you, they have interviews and they're, they're, you can reach them. Slots players tend to be quiet, uh, tend to stay hidden, right? But poker players, it's not part of the slots tournament, the, the poker tournament approach. Um, they get interviewed and they can be reached out to by people who are doing research to say, so how many tournaments do you go to? How much, um, you know, what's, which ones do you go to? What's the stake? Uh, how much do you spend? How much do you make? And there's enough to have statistics. And we all love statistics, right? Um, uh, <laughs> um, so could a slots player do something similar? And if so, how would it work? And also, would it work? Would it be a viable approach? And this is one of the topics not discussed in the article, and I thought it would be a good thing to touch on here. Um, so let's talk about that, but in a moment, because there's another topic I didn't discuss in the article. Um, uh, quit. So, yes, uh, the the live chat. Uh, Leslie from Oregon is here. Uh, um, if so, if RS wouldn't mind answering some of the questions. Ah, um, yeah, yeah, uh, you're here, RS. Okay, you're going to get questions. This group asks questions. So please um, uh, try to answer some of them. The, the Facebook groups are private. Um, you don't have to answer RS. You don't, you don't have to answer. Um, but I won't. Uh, Facebook groups are private. And um, even so, uh, that's why I'm only saying RS. Uh, but in any case, um, there looks like some questions. Um, <laughs> um, are people playing poker now? Sure. Uh, do they do it with masks on? Sure. Why not? Um, <laughs> I hope so. Um, but, you know, I don't know that there's really tournaments, right? Uh, peop there's two kinds, as I've been trying to go over here, uh, there are two kinds of basically two genres, two kinds of poker players, which is those who, uh, I'll come back to this point, those that grind it out, those that that go to the lo local casino, play locals, and collect their money. Uh, and then there's those that go to major events. Now, there hasn't been major events so I kind of doubt that there's, you know, what is the World uh, Series of Poker, WSOP.com? You know, what's it say on their website? Are they holding any? And that's, that's also part of that, too. Can you be, can you win money at poker uh, as on the poker circuit when the poker circuit is shut down because of the pandemic? Can you make money at slots at casinos when the craziness, you know, where everything, all the business practices of the casinos are disrupted right now. So, you know, this is meant to be an article long term. It is meant to be something that we can talk about starting in a couple of months. Um, it might be possible now. I mean, there's opportunities that exist at casinos. Um, some casinos, if you can find them that are temporary and, you know, gives you a it might give you a clue of more subtle behavior that you weren't aware of at a casino after the pandemic, but it's kind of their go-to approach now. So you can learn stuff at the casinos now, but mostly I've just been staying away. And, and I, you now it seems like the wisest thing to do, um, you know, this week. We'll see what next week holds and next month holds. Um, so uh, I'm uh, glad to see the so, so much activity in the uh, live chat. I'll come back to them in a few minutes uh, and catch up then. Uh, so let me stay focused on uh, the article. So um, poker players, some a, a group of po poker players, uh, they like to go out to, they do the poker circuit, right? They, they, they go once a year, a couple times a year, a few months out of the year, and the rest of the time they save their money and do, you know, live their lives. It kind of reminds me of uh, K through 12 teachers who take the summer off. You know, maybe they have a different job in the summer. Maybe they only work nine months out of the year. You know, there, there are people who, that, that have that kind of lifestyle. And that's really what's going on here. This is what I didn't cover in the article was kind of the um, traveling gambler lifestyle even if it's only for a few months out of the year, maybe it's longer. So, uh, you know, might a winning slots player do something similar to what this group of um, poker circuit, professional 
poker players do? And if so, how would that work and would it be a viable approach? And this is one of the topics not discussed in the article, so let's discuss it. But before that, um, I also didn't discuss in the article how much profit makes for a comfortable living. I mean, this is very personal. Uh, you know, I don't want to talk about medium incomes and I don't want to talk about, you know, what your needs are, but perhaps you can see why I didn't get into this in the article. How much is enough? It's a very personal question with all sorts of answers. Uh, and the details matter. Your details matter. But we can take this back to our professional poker player example. While it does not while it does vary widely and it depends on how much they play, there are some useful statistics out there if you search for them. In general, professional poker players can make as little as $10,000 a year up to $1 million or even more. One source quotes professional poker players in Florida in a semi, semi top tier make, uh, I guess you might call this, you know, like we have a semi top tier for slots, loyalty programs, right? So second to the top tier. So call it the semi top tier. Uh, they make between a hundred thousand dollars a year to $250,000 a year. But you know, this is rare and we want to talk about something that's a little more common, right? There's always the exceptions out there, but let's talk about, let's talk about a quote, good unquote poker player. OK, and they have statistics for such an individual, however, they def define that. And this is an article that I um, uh, I'll actually I'll make that available. I think I can do that right now in the uh, drop that in to the live chat. Uh, yeah, there's an article. It's called uh, How Much Do Professional Live Poker Players Make? Um, and and so I'll put that into the podcast show notes and the video description at per usual. So for a good poker player, yearly income might exceed $50,000 and even approach $100,000. Uh, is that good enough? I mean... You know, what are your expenses? What if, what are you, what is your income? I, d please don't tell me. Uh, uh, but, you know, between fifty and and $100,000, you know, this is what a good poker player makes. And we, you know, we talk about statistics and slots, right? Um, even if it's not your state, what kind of return might a high limit poker machine provide? in other states where they actually have return statistics on slot machine denominations. And is that return better for high limit or low limit? Right. And so even if it's not your state, this is still useful stuff. So even though this is not slots, this is poker. Still a good player can win between, you know, 50,000 and a hundred thousand up to a hundred thousand. So this is, this is where it gets interesting. Um, what do they need to do to make that happen? If, if this analogy that I'm making between slots enthusiasts and, and poker players who, who know how to win, if this means anything, you know, to use this example, this bigger example, a, a larger group of people, um, how might a slots enthusiast learn to do what this group of poker players does? So professional tournament poker players might go without a big score for months and then win big at a single tournament. All right. As a slots enthusiast, does this sound familiar? You know, do you have a big win? You're losing for the night. You know, um, do you lose and do you lose and lose at slots? Then more than recover your losses with a big jackpot all while, you know, imagine doing this all while, you're on the road traveling all over the country playing at different casinos and all for $50,000 to $100,000 per year, excluding expenses. So, you know, I think this is a real, you know, possibility of, of comparing what poker players do with what slots enthusiasts could do. So as a slots enthusiast, are you like the other type of professional poker player, the one that typically makes a whole lot less, but plays at a local casino where their income is so steady, it's practically an hourly rate. That's what Mark does. Uh, you know, it's income, it's steady income. 
if you're contemplating, if you're contemplating making a living playing slots, however, you know, the, the article is five ways to whichever one of those ways you're interested in, um, as SR, uh, what, and I discussed, uh, uh, these are basically your two choices. I mean, there's details, but there's, you know, hit the road or go to your local casino, you know, go for the big win with all the risk that implies or grind it out as a steady income locally. So let's, let's dig into the steady income approach first. First, of course, you need to win at slots. I don't mean, you know, lucky at slots, as helpful and as useful as, you know, that is. Uh, we all like that sort of thing. You know, it's part of what we do. But, but rather that you're skilled, you figured out how to win at a local casino, like SR has. I mean, that's, you know, RS. As RS has offered in a live chat, you know, he's happy to explain. But this is about his casino, okay? And my worry is if you wanted to move to a, and I mentioned this to him, uh, my worry is if you want to move uh, to being full-time, if you want to make a living at it, then you sort of have to question how firm some of that winning is. Uh, and I don't know if RS uh, plays at a tribal casino because it's very unlikely a tribal, Seaver, a tribal casino would ever be sold. But it happens every couple of years with commercial casinos. I mean, it has locally, since, since uh, Horseshoe Cincinnati opened in 2013, in the last seven years, it's been sold twice. Actually, more times than that, because a commercial casino has got many owners and some drop away and some stay and then some get like a controlling interest with a block of them. And so they have more than 50 percent, you know, their 50.1 percent ownership and then they get to call the shots. You know, it's all this uh, back and forth. So the the major owners were resulted in a name change at the casino where you, uh, you know, saw the sign change. That's only happened, you know, there's been three big signs up. Okay, and one most recently earlier this year that was approved last year. So, uh, and that's only seven years. Uh, then there's, you know, you win taxable jackpots, you get the W2G, and then the W2G is the official name of the casino. And I've seen that change a couple of times because the conglomerate of the, you know, the, the organization that is in charge of the owners, you know, that can have some subtle shifts when, you know, groups of, uh, 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 individuals, uh, owners, uh, sort of like take a controlling interest. So there's a lot going on. Not so much to worry about at a tribal casino, but otherwise. And as always, you know, as I talk about these things, it may sound as though that's a bad thing. It isn't. It's like the best thing ever. And I'll explain why in a minute. Um, I need to check back in with the live chat. Uh, it's, it's, uh, looks like a busy day. Um, Uh, so RS asks, uh, says there's something that he does want to do, which is enter a slot tournament. Oh man, I just, you know, you and I are the same RS. It might, it's a different casino. It might be a different winning strategy, but it is pattern recognition. And if somebody sits you down and says, okay, this is the time I want you to be here. This is the chair I want you to sit in. And this is the button I want you to press push, but you can push that button as much as you like only for the next, you know, three minutes. Uh, and then stop. And, you know, there's no control. There's no choice. You can choose to push the button or you could choose not to push the button. There's no coming back, you know, when the crowds are less than the casino. There's no coming back, you know, on another day in the morning early. You know, there's, there's no control. So I, I found slot tournaments very frustrating. I mean, please go uh, and, and, and see if your playing ability uh, matches. But, you know, that's not skill anymore. If the skill is removed, okay, you're comparing how lucky the universe makes you, which you have no control over compared to the other slots players. But, you know, it's 
worth doing. <laughs> um, uh, so Michael says in Blackhawk, it's been more than a couple of years since I met any players making a living at it. Um, yeah, there are. And, and I, I have topics, you know, content on this. Uh, it's when it's luck, it's luck. You know, you have no control. And maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't happen. Odds say it's unlikely and that's it. Right. Then there's, you know, it, but the physical reel on a slot machine, I keep on trying to find different ways to explain this to people. The physical reel on a slot machine isn't a roulette wheel. All right. I mean, assuming roulette wheels don't have a break, but, um, you know, the, it's not free spinning. Uh, uh, electric, uh, uh, the, it is free spinning on a roulette wheel. It is not free spinning on a slot machine, but you know, it kind of looks like maybe it is. No, it's controlled by electronic circuit board, which says stop here, you know, and so it stops there. And, and, uh, you know, it's not, it's not random there. It's not fully random. There's luck involved, but as of 2012, with central servers and a little bit before that, because it always had electronics well, for as long as it's had electronics since the 70s. So when circuit boards came out, uh, it's it's got some skill involved. There's something the casino has input on, but not all casinos choose to do that. Not all casinos do that. And you could have a casino where nobody could win. RS couldn't win. I couldn't win. You know, we'd take it as a challenge, maybe. But but there are casinos where nobody's winning, not not. No, because the casino uh, has set it up that way. I mean, there's like uh, the state of Washington, right? Uh, the casino has no say in, you know, the slot machine on the end of the row or second end of the row near the bar, you know, make that a winner so other people feel excited and go to some other slot machine and spend their money. You know, that kind of business practice that we can take advantage of can't happen in Washington, the state of Washington, because there's a tribal lottery system. There's a non-tribal, but there's a tribal lottery system. And its job is to connect to slot machines in casinos and run them, right? The, the casino changes the paper, the voucher paper when needed. Otherwise, the off-site is the control. And so, you know, that's much more luck-based slot machine gambling than you know, all the skill-based stuff is, maybe all of it has been removed, right? Um, some of the slots in New York are like that. Uh, the question is Rhode Island, is it Rhode Island like that? Maybe it, you know, these, how are, how's the business set up? Uh, and so, um, all right, so talks, uh, RS talks a little bit about, about table games, um, uh, Je Jeffrey says table games are still closed in Maine. Yep. Uh, let's see. Richard says, have met a high roller that did, in fact, claim winning $3 million in hand pays f uh, for last year. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I, yes. And I have to, okay, so Richard says such and such, not such and such, but the, the person says $3 million in hand pays. See, that's that's missing key information, all right? Um, did they win a profit? You know, uh, also, uh, and, and we could talk a little bit about, about uh, um, statistics too. Um, you know, can you imagine spending $3 million, you know, your top uh, denomination, the top bill that you can use is a $100 bill. All right. So can you imagine putting, what is that, uh, 30,000 bills into a machine? I mean, one, two, what's, what's 30,000 seconds? You know, this, this is months of just handling money you put into the machine. Yeah, just consider that kind of life. Um, Steve says, do poker players uh, put money away for the future? That's a question, probably not. I think uh, there in the now. Um, uh, Steve, actually, the article uh, that I uh, put in there has some great words on that. Uh, it has some great topics on that. It made me realize I'm, how glad I was that we've been talking here about money management. 
uh, they are all about money management. They get bored at a tournament where they have to stay awake for you know, 23 hours, 41 hours straight. And it's mostly just boring, but they have to stay aware and focused, you know, on the game as it proceeds game after game, after game, after game for days. And they get bored and they're just like, could it be just be over? I'm going to make, you know, Texas hold them. I'm all in. And then they're done. And they're like, oh, I should have been more patient. They have to manage their money and also you know, save their money from previous year's winnings until the next time that tournament happens a year later. And so they both have to live on that money and keep the entry fee for the next tournament, next number of tournaments. So that's a life and it revolves around money management. Uh, Let's see. Love today's uh, live chat. It's very lively. Um, da, da, da. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so there was a topic in the article uh, that, I, that I wrote about uh, that I didn't cover. And I'm not going to cover it here either, which is taxes. All right. Uh, you know, if you're a professional gambler, status with IRS, that's um, a a section or two um, uh, in the article, uh, not to give too much away. Um, you know, that's a business. And, um, you know, I, I have a business. You know, I'm not a professional gambler. Uh, I've chosen not to be, uh, but um, professional slots gambler. But I do have a business. And so, again, I don't want to talk about the article. Uh uh, but taxes, I just, you know, I, I've, I've done that before and I wished I hadn't touched it with a 10 foot pole. Um, my personal experience has been, I, uh, and I'll mention this in a minute, um, I, I, I got to top tier uh, at Horseshoe Cincinnati in the last six weeks of 2013. They had opened, I believe it was in March of that year. So that was their first year. And, uh, we, and we'll, I'll talk about that as well, but, uh, six weeks. All right. 51 taxable jackpots. One of them as high as $27,000. Right. Uh, and I'll, and I got the top tier, uh, seven stars in that six weeks. I, I mean, I'd been there half a dozen times. It's all in the book, uh, exactly how many and when and all that. Um, but uh, I had uh, uh, won 51 tax, taxable jackpots basically in the last six weeks. And, and I had a few points. I was still in the first tier. Um, I, I wasn't even close to getting to the second tier in the loyalty program. Uh, and, you know, by the end of the year, six weeks later, boom. Uh, Arrow Fong, Arrow Direct Fong is here. Excellent. Hi, been a while. Uh, and when I hit, you know, seven stars, uh, it was all just such a new experience. Uh, but I think about sometimes, um, you know, just so much I didn't know. Uh, and I think about sometimes, what if I started going to that casino when it opened in March 2013? And what if that first year wasn't the last six weeks where I got to top tier. What if it had started in March and I spent the whole year doing that? You know, how many, if, let's say it was just the same. And I think it was, judging by people's reactions. But let's say it was exactly the same. Uh, March, third month. So basically it was uh, nine months instead of six weeks. And nine months is, let's see, that would be maybe six, six weeks, right? Yeah, about that. Six, six weeks. So uh, I could have had six times 51. Let's call it six times 50 hand pays, 300 hand pays, right? Six times $30,000 in profit, right? So $180,000 in profit. Uh, and, and, and I, I got the top tier. So that was $750,000 in points. So I'd cycled my bankroll at seven, I'd, I'd cycled bankrolls 
to seventy seven hundred fifty thousand dollars worth. There was a few free credits, but in six weeks, how many? How much do you get? So, and and that first year, actually, went to like eight hundred thousand something. Um, so let's call it by the number seven hundred fifty thousand. And it was let's say it was six times that. We're talking about five million dollars the first year. If I had done it the for since it had opened, and rather than just the last six weeks, I mean, the point I'm trying to make here is, what would have happened to my taxes? Because I found out something terrible on my taxes early in 2014 when I started doing them. I had city taxes. I was not even fully aware that I'd had city taxes. I, I guess I you know, sort of, I, I started there the previous year. First year I would have had them was 2013 and the second year was 2014 because I moved there in 2012. And, you know, it was all sort of like, huh, what? I never had them before in my life. Can you imagine $5 million where they don't accept gambling deductions, just like state, the state of Oklahoma doesn't or up to the state of Oklahoma, state of Oklahoma has a gambling deduction for non-residents of, I think it's 16 or $17,000 and that's it. And after that you pay taxes. So you can, you imagine my paying 2% on $5 million. Yeah. You know, surprise. Uh, so, uh, I'm not going to talk about taxes and that's my 10 minute rant on taxes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Michael. I, uh, Michael says the not a roulette wheel, um, is a good description. Um, uh, thank you. I've been working on these things. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying to get to know, uh, my audience. I mean, I know the people I play with, right. And we talk and chat, um, but I really have to sort of ask questions. And so I've decided to start a weekly poll. All right. I'm going to send out a poll each week um, when I think of a relevant question. And I put the link earlier in the live chat and I'll put the link um, in in uh, the show notes and the video description. Please uh, click on that. It's one question, multiple choice answers. What kind of slot machines do you play? This is not about the game theme. This is about high limit, low limit, progressive, the class two bingo style that you know, you might find it at a tribal casino, but perhaps you don't go to tribal casinos. I'm trying to find out which kind of games you like to play. Other questions, other polls that I'll have. Uh, oh, and if you got, if you're on the email newsletter, if you signed up at professorsots.com, uh, be on my list, not the subscription on YouTube, but the subscription on my website, uh, uh, the email list. Um, you got that question today in this morning's email. I send out a weekly email. Uh, but then it's also in every Facebook group. So please, you know, take a look and answer the question. Um, multiple choice answer, uh, whichever is appropriate, can be all of them. Many people, for many people, it's all of them. Uh, and that's perfectly fine. I'd like to get an idea what you guys do precisely and, and more of a national average than southwestern Ohio. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, RS, uh, I know, I know it's your first time here, but, um, uh, some of the points that we've made, and it may have been too long since I talked about, uh, those slot machines that have based on have slot machine game themes on television shows, uh, you know, how they pay royalties and somebody has got to pay for that. And I'm pretty sure players are at least one of the groups, maybe the only group that actually pays for that licensing to get from the show. That's expensive stuff, multi-million dollar stuff. Um, so, uh, yes, I agree with Leslie. Thank you, RS. Um, Wayne, uh, uh, sorry, it's in Sacramento, uh, uh, Arrow Direct Fong, uh, surrounded by uh, tribal casinos. Absolutely. That's what um, you have card games and a uh, tribal casino. Not that I, <laughs> that you don't know this, but others people may not uh, know that C California has tribal casinos only. Uh, and then there's card games. Uh, card card rooms where they just play table games. Uh, casinos, the host, what is their function? Am I being followed? Uh, they wish me luck sometimes. What they do they do for casino or players? Um, right. So if you've had a host, uh, the host is a lovely, lovely thing. Okay. Um, I've had them cut through a crowd of people 
who are all, you know, as they walk by, the people around them are like, oh, could you, you know, and they kind of pluck at their clothes, you know, and stuff. And they just force their way through because they need to get to me within 30 seconds of my putting my players club card into the slot machine. All right. They're dedicated to, you know, they're, they're the host of someone and they, you know, the, the look on the faces of the people, they just walk past, you know, to get to me because they're there for me, you know, when it's my host or if it's your host, they're there for you. Um, I have nothing bad to say about hosts. Um, and besides which, you know, they can't track you. They don't know what you're doing. I mean, they're, they're trying to get you a good meal. They're trying to get you, you know, do you like baseball or football? You know, they, they ask questions um, to try to help you to learn what they can give you, what they have and fight for you when all the hosts get together and divvy up. You know, it's like a good concierge on a, you know, street and, you know, Miracle Mile downtown Chicago. And all the concierges are like, okay, I've got this and I've got this. There's been movies about concierges, you know, doing deals uh, on getting the best stuff for their people. And if they know what their people want, they prepare those th sorts of things. And that's how I think of hosts. Um, they don't need to track your behavior in order to do something about it. That's what electronics are for. And I kind of doubt that, too, because with the articles that I read, and I have articles I'm working on to come out about the slot machine manufacturers who make more than just slots. They also make these uh, enterprise systems, the the software that runs kiosks and, and the whole casino, really. Uh, you know, everything from communication to uh, the central server to, to you know, a call system uh, to get the slot attendants to the machine with the blinking light quick and, and all of that. Um, yeah, they, they, they give you, uh, as Dave said, they give you free stuff. Hosts give you free stuff, but they give you free stuff that you're looking for. And sometimes the free stuff is what you've asked for, that sort of thing. Um, but if you go to the, you know, the things that you're talking about are more the electronics. Uh, and, and even those are not that great because as I was saying, I, I, I go to, to these reports, these legally required to be clear and easy to read financial statements that get technical a little with their offerings and explain what they have or don't have. And it's not real time. So, um, <laughs> Harold Trexlong says, like, what, Sam Rich? No, like, what, um, uh, football? You want to go to your local football stadium or do you want to go to your local baseball stadium? You, got, you like hockey? You know, downtown Cincinnati has got all three. Which one do you want? You know, and how many? And uh, hotels, you know, the biggest problem, there's a host section, um, and I should make an article on that in my book. It's, it's in my book um, about all the things that you could talk about. I mean, they, they're looking for ideas and, and they want something to get something appropriate for you. Top tier uh, I never got particularly good at, at asking for the hard stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'll let that continue a uh, conversation. Uh, yeah. Uh, always tip your host. Yep. Uh, and your slot attendant. Sometimes the host has to put it in the kitty because they sometimes like if like floor managers can't accept tips, but they can't accept it on behalf of all the slot attendants. They just they themselves can't accept it. Just one of the things you'll, to learn. Um, okay. So, Hey, um, uh, there's a lot of questions about hosts. Maybe, uh, on the next time I do something on hosts, how about, how's that sound? Uh, let's get back to, um, uh, making a living. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, uh, right. So, uh, so we talked about steady income. Uh, yes. Steady income works if you figured out how to win at a local casino or at least one that's within a reasonable driving distance. Um, uh, this approaches uh, what we often talk about here in these live streams. We talk about money management techniques and winning slot strategies and first finding, then taking advantage of common casino business practices like my five pull approach uh, that collects the tastes some casinos like to give out when uh, players first sit down at a slot machine. Uh, and then, you know, I'm saying stop when you collect it and move on and collect and collect and collect and make it your strategy, uh, play a little and then move on. Uh, and that's all laid out very carefully. We've talked about that. But this is a, one of the steady income approaches that some poker players use 
uh, you know, the steady approach is what some play, players use to make a living or perhaps only supplement their income. And perhaps so do you. We've talked and talked about this as well as um, and, and we'll still have a lot to talk about uh, when it comes to skill based a skill-based winning approach to slots. But what if you want to try the other way, the, the other poker approach? What if you want to try that with slots? What if you want to win big, perhaps only once a year? How might slots enthusiasts go about doing this? I didn't discuss this in my article, so let's discuss it now. For two years in a row, and I touched on this already, for two years in a row, I made $30,000, a $30,000 profit playing slots. $30,000 one year, $30,000 the next year. Uh, this was during the last six weeks of 2013 and through the end of August in 2014. This is the time I refer to as my nine months of winning 90 taxable jackpots. And the highest of those was, was $27,000. I also won a car. I go over this time of my life in my book, Learning to Win, available on Amazon as softcover, ebook, and audiobook. It's also available for less uh, as a PDF version on my professorslots.com website. I will confess that I was an idiot in how I was playing slots at the beginning of those nine months. I knew so little. I shudder to think how many times I casually lost thousands and even tens of thousands of dollars through poor money management skills and stupid approaches when playing $100 denomination slot machines. On the other hand, I learned what happens when you do that. So I got better. I learned to be better, much better. And I've taken it as my task to tell you all about it. So you know better too. Why was I winning so much? Okay, that's the fundamental question here. For me, during that nine months, why was I winning so much? Luck had little to do with it. And my bankrolls were not huge. My bankroll was just reasonable for playing a two or three credit, $5 or $10, $5 or $10 denomination slot machine. You should be able to answer this question by now. What's 100 bets on a three credit, $5 denomination slot machine? What's 100 bets on a $2, $10, two credit, $10 denomination, denomination slot machine? Right. That's bankrolls between... $1,500 and $2,000. I have some spelling errors in my notes. Um, yet, what was the casino business practice that I was taking so much advantage of? Let me tell you. Let me tell you my winning slot strategy that is the biggest money maker of all. I was playing at a new casino where there had never been a casino before. I've mentioned this, but that's it. That's what all the winning I was doing was about, alongside perhaps a couple dozen of us doing the same thing at Horseshoe Cincinnati when it first opened in 2013. This was before they sold themselves and their great reputation for a top dollar price to the next owner that drove them and their slots players into the ground. All right, this is total business practice. New casino, never been one there before, need to educate a large population on what it means to win at a casino and hook them in and then take advantage like we're taking advantage. Only they take advantage of us or they try to. So we turn the wheels on them. Anyway, if you want to make a living playing slots, then you need to grind it out at your local casino. Unless your local casino is new, like mine was, the only casino within hours and located in a population center where the new casino has a decent chance of making money from a bunch of people that have rarely gone to a casino before. That's how it was for me. When I could barely help myself making $30,000 a year, my first year being only six weeks long. If, po if poker players want to win big, they need to locate several poker tournaments and improve their skills until they might possibly win at one of them. As slots enthusiasts, if you want to win big, it's not the mega jackpot of a wide area progressive slot machine. For one thing, those are going away. In the last year, did you know downtown Las Vegas and the Strip have both removed their mega bucks slot machines? 
Too much legal liability for the casinos involved, apparently, despite its popularity with players. Instead, for slots enthusiasts, the best way I know to win big is to hit the road. Go find recently opened casinos which fit the above criteria and play slots at them endlessly. But be warned, you may have to live in a van at first. You might eventually be able to live at their casino at their hotel at their casino with endlessly comped rooms and casino fo- and casino food but don't count on that not if you're winning at Horseshoe Cincinnati in 2014 they obviously weren't tracking how much i was winning and only how much i was spending comps everywhere free slots play and all kinds of electronics appliances whatnot but at foxwoods in 2018 They were tracking how much I was winning, as well as how much I was spending. And I was winning more than I was spending. I couldn't get a comp to save my life. Not even a bit off on my hotel room, and I was there for three days. Because I wasn't winning more than I was losing. I was winning more than I was spending by several thousand dollars. So again, these days, with the latest and greatest of loyalty programs, such as they have become, you may need to live in a van, an RV, or something. All right? So again, let's check in with the live chat, see how we're doing. Great show today, guys. I mean, you guys make the show. It's great to see this kind of interaction. Um, I will seriously considering having the next show be about hosts. Uh, seems like that was definitely a topic today in the in the live chat. I mean, um, so let's see. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Richard's got some good information there. Uh, uh, mail flyers, hosts call you. They have access to your statistics on your royalty play. Um, if they don't know you. You have to win a lot the first visit and then beg. Um, yeah, yeah. They, uh, one of the things that gets very hard and we'll talk about this, I think if I do have an episode on things are getting busy. Okay. Uh, there's so many topics to talk about. Um, I'm ramping up on videos I'm, I'm putting out. You might've noticed I put out 12 in the last week. Okay. That, that won't be 12 because I was getting caught up. Uh, but in this next week I'm getting working to a regular schedule. I think with this live show being one video, three other videos, one of those would be a state by state on Tuesday. And then I'm, I'm hoping to steady out, get steady at two more videos, four videos a week total. Saturday, the live show, Sunday, Tuesday for the state by state and Thursday. And I'm hoping to make Thursday like an ongoing series of, uh, you know, uh, top seven, my, my seven winning strategies and, you know, do that for seven weeks and then, or something like that. Um, just try to find a series, short series all on Thursdays. That's, that's kind of my plan. In any case, um, uh, I'll try to, I'll consider talking about hosts next week, but every week is becoming like this huge thing. So we'll see. Uh, John is a question for me. Um, yeah, if you, if you're talking in the chat and you're talking to somebody else, that's great. But if you mention my name, my eye sort of spots it. Uh, Michael says, Hey John, does it make sense to ask if there has been a big change in which computers make slots go along with, in which, oh, in which companies make slots to go along with computers? Uh, no, uh, they all do. Uh, and I have articles out there. These are two articles that I do. I, I chose the top two companies. Um, I need to add one for class two machines, the VGT company. But I so far I do uh, scientific games and uh, uh, what is it? IGT, uh, International Gaming uh, Technologies. And those are the two big players for class three type games, Vegas style slot machines. Uh, and I have articles for last year, but their, their financial statements came out just before the pandemic. This year, and I need to rewrite those articles. I rewrite them uh, every year. But uh, if you go look for that on my website, you'll find them. Uh, and that gives you a tone. I thought one might just be kind of, you know, maybe they're just doing one thing. So I decided to do two of the main companies. And if they're similar, then that's fine. I I, I have recently decided I need to add VGT because they, they do class three. But uh, certainly IGT and scientific games make the software. In fact, they're, they have uh, what they call business segments. And this might be actually the topic for next week um, because I plan on doing those articles soon. Uh, they have a lottery section, a gaming machine section, and then they have like their software 
uh, section where they uh, offer these systems uh, to help casinos. Uh, And that's basically the three elements of most of those companies. Um, Yeah. Uh, Getting close to our time. Uh, Let's see. Answered that question. Talk between... uh, (laughs) <laughs> I have a five pull method, but Dave says, uh, but I'm still an idiot. I use the 500 pull method. <laughs> well, that works too sometimes, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> not, not for me. Uh, okay. Uh, how much your tip is up to you. Um, yeah, $100 bills usually work for me. Uh, I, I try to arrange it. I, I probably don't give enough. When you get a taxable jackpot, um, you get, uh, you know, it's $1,200 or more. So I figure a 20. Um, but then I, uh, you have a slot attendant who, um, uh, you know, takes care of the paperwork, but then they have someone who checks. So I give a 20 to each of them. Uh, the floor managers usually don't come along when the slot, when the jackpot, jackpot's over $10,000. And if it's over $10,000, I give out hundreds. Um, for a host, uh, you know, they, they've asked me if I want a meal on, and, and uh, I, I just sort of take that as a service. I make sure I tip at the meal uh, because, uh, you know, just because it's free to me doesn't mean the slot attendant that the server doesn't deserve a tip and that's cash. So a hundred dollar meal might cost me 20 bucks or if I don't get it comped, it would cost me 20 bucks. So, you know, Bobby's Burgers or something. So, so either way, you know, I, I pay. Um, hey, Neil Go, aloha. Uh, um, welcome. Uh, <laughs> um, you crack, you crack me up, Dave. A 500 pull method. Wow. Um, let's see. Right. Longer question. Uh, right. Danny has a question. I was wondering what your thoughts are on the stats at Vegas tightening up their slots over the last three months due to the corona. They haven't. I mean, they have and they haven't. Uh, I have an article um, that kind of talks about this. Uh, uh, the stats in Nevada, Las Vegas, um, are reported by the casinos more than any other state. They're reported weekly. But the reported by the casino weekly, but reported to the world on their website monthly. So the requirement of having an 85 percent turnout or actually I think it's 75 for Nevada. But whatever the return statistics is, they have to meet that during the week. So what they do is they turn up the odds for the locals during the week and turn down the odds for all the people coming from California and everywhere else on the weekends, where the weekends are technically from about 10 o'clock on Friday to about 10 o'clock on Monday, uh, in the morning on Friday, in the morning on on Monday. And that's basically the weekend. So don't play then. And I have an article on all of this and where to, you know, uh, follow, find out where the locals play because they know best. Maybe you are a local. Um, uh, but what you're saying is one of those things we saw during the pandemic, and I'll keep going for another minute um, or so uh, just to answer these questions. The pandemic has been showing two responses from the casino. One is they tighten up. Uh, the other one is, um, you know, they need to make money, but they ch- decide not to drive away their customers, which is what they're doing with the casinos where they just tighten. The uh, the casinos that have, I think, the best approach are those that let the player win, but the wins are smaller. We just want to win, all right? If it's if it's was a thousand dollars and now it's a hundred dollars, gee, you know, <laughs> I don't know the players notice, but not winning anything at all where they just give their money is just a horrible experience. So I think you might be looking at um, just smaller wins. I hope so. Uh, and read my article uh, about um, uh, visiting Las Vegas. I don't think I call it visiting Las Vegas because it's a movie. (laughs) Um, uh, Thank you, Lois. I appreciate it. Uh, Hopefully I think that's about it. Um, uh, Really densely packed show today. Um, I appreciate you giving me an extra two minutes. um, And I will see you next week. Uh, The last thing I really wanted to say about this whole uh, making a living at slots is... um, I'm doing it. And, uh, well, I guess I'll just leave it at that. Some of you know more details. Um, I'm going to hang up now, but I'll be on the live chat for another couple of minutes. You take care.
Remember to visit ProfessorSlots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top tier slot machine casino gambler. This is the next segment of the show on slot machine casino gambling. Here, I provide a brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district, emphasizing by far anything of interest to slot machine casino gamblers. Up next is Rhode Island slot machine casino gambling in 2020. Here goes. Rhode Island slot machine casino gambling consists of two casinos having video lottery terminal, VLT, style slot machines. Theoretical payout limits have not been legally set. However, monthly return statistics for both casinos are publicly available online. The minimum legal gambling age in Rhode Island does not depend upon the gambling activity. For land-based casinos, poker rooms, bingo, the lottery, and paramutual wagering, it's 18. In November 1973, a constitutional amendment approved by voters allowed the state to begin regulating lotteries in Rhode Island. Under this gaming regulation, the first drawing was in May 1974. In 1992, video lottery terminals became available at the state's two paramutual facilities. Table games became available at first one facility in 2013 and the other in late 2018. Next up is a usually short statement about slot machine private ownership, which I have included in case you live in this U.S. state and are considering owning a slot machine. Here it is. In Rhode Island, it is legal to own a slot machine privately. A 1973 constitutional amendment created the Rhode Island Lottery Commission to regulate the lottery, but disbanded in 2005. By mid-2006, the Gaming Commission became the State Lottery, a division of the State of Rhode Island Department of Revenue. This made the Rhode Island Lottery, the LOT, a state agency responsible for gaming history, regulations, statistics, and gaming income tax collection. Further, its central site hosts the central service systems which remotely connect to VLT machines at Rhode Island casinos. All casino VLTs offer six or more games including slots, blackjack, kino, and three versions of poker. In this section, I'll discuss Rhode Island gambling establishments. There are two commercial casinos in Rhode Island. The largest casino in Rhode Island is Twin River Casino Hotel, having 4,100 gaming machines. The second largest casino, and only other casino in Rhode Island, is Tiverson Casino Hotel with 1,000 gaming machines. The two paramutual wagering facilities in Rhode Island with VOT slot machines are 1. Tiverton Casino Hotel in Tiverton, 22 miles southeast of Providence, about 500 feet from the Massachusetts border and two, Twin River Casino Hotel in Lincoln, seven miles north-northwest of Providence. Rhode Island has a single federally recognized American Indian tribe, the Nargaset Indian tribe. However, they have no gaming compact with the state and therefore Rhode Island does not have tribal casinos. As an alternative to enjoying Rhode Island slot machine casino gambling, consider exploring casino options in a nearby state. Bordering Rhode Island is to the north and east. Massachusetts, to the south, the Atlantic Ocean, and to the west, Connecticut. To visit any of my articles on these U.S. states, simply visit ProfessorSlots.com followed by its two-letter postal designation. For example, my Massachusetts Slots article is available at ProfessorSlots.com slash MA. Are you interested in sharing and learning with other slots enthusiasts in Rhode Island? If so, join our Rhode Island Slots community on Facebook at ProfessorSlots.com slash FB. R.I. All you'll need is a Facebook profile to join this private Facebook group freely. There, you'll be able to privately share your slots experiences as well as chat with players about slots gambling in or near Rhode Island. Again, use this convenient link I've created to go directly to our group on Facebook, professorslots.com slash F-B-R-I. Join us. No minimum or maximum theoretical payout limits are in place for VLT gaming machines in the ocean state of Rhode Island. However, Rhode Island's VLT return statistics are available by month and casino. In Rhode Island, the player win percentage is payout percent. For February 2020, payout percents were Twin River, 91.9%, Tiverton, 91.7%. In summary, Rhode Island slot machine casino gambling consists of two casinos having video lottery terminal, VLT style gaming machines regulated and controlled by the state lottery, a state agency. All VLTs offer six or more games, including slots, blackjack, kino, and three versions of poker. No theoretical payout limits exist. However, each month, the state lottery makes return statistics available online for each of Rhode Island's two casinos. 
Over the last year, there has been little to no change in the slots gaming industry in Rhode Island. Remember to visit ProfessorSlots.com slash subscribe to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Part one of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast will include a live stream Q&A session on YouTube. Remember, my weekly Q&A session on YouTube is on Saturdays from noon until 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Bring whatever slots questions you have and I'll do my best to answer them. An easy to remember link to my YouTube channel is ProfessorSlots.com slash live. Feel free to stop by any time during my hour long Q&A. Part two of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is another brief overview of the current state of gambling in a U.S. state, territory, or the federal district. Next time, I'll be talking to you about the great U.S. state of South Carolina. That's the end of another great episode of the Professor Slots podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Show notes for this episode are on my website at professorslots.com slash episode 101. I plan to have the next episode come out very soon for you, where I'll have more amazing content for the show. Until the next episode, have fun, be safe, and make good choices. Bye.